Board of County Commissioner now back in session. Michael, you're going to uh, do Allen's. Before we do, can we take Ginger? Yeah, I meant sorry, Ginger. She I got that number from Linda. And um, for Ms. today's. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> and Linda's part of that conference call at Marshall's on too, so. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really want to take up too much of Linda's time because she was on a conference call with Marsha, uh, but we did tally up the bills today, uh, and she said we'd get the next ones next time, so that's, that's good. Uh, but today's is $46,124.45, so she wants that on record. $46,124.45. So that's for today. That is not counting... The other outstanding bills and did bills that are going to be coming in. Did Linda say where his money's coming from, Mike? No, but uh, you give me one second so that we can put that into motion as to what um. Where yeah, money, exactly what, 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 where's the money being derived from? Yeah, we need to. And uh, we did we did talk very very briefly because she was on a conference call, but uh, Aaron is looking into something that maybe could help us the county save some money in the future as well on this medical so hopefully with us all working together we can come to a solution and um, maybe you guys even know of some resources that could help us cut some costs well, we was down south and then uh, Smokey went into a meeting and their sheriff department got a lot of help uh, on all kind of medical help do you know if they were using a third-party vendor or was it a contract that or Miss, that was Miss Sally from Miami Day what they, was they using a third party did they say I don't know. They got so much money down there. I got, I, about my if you have day. some contact information, no, I, I'll be glad to reach out. I'll get it to you. But they got, she told us we could get it. To, Smokey asked several, several questions about it. She mm -hmm. said there's money available for uh, inmate or whatever. They got, they had how many, 5,000 inmate or 5,000 in the jail people. I yeah, can only imagine down, what their bills look like. And all that. Yeah, right, to, yeah. Well, totally, you have to totally totally with that size. You us. have to have an well, entire like said, little Dade, hospital. Yeah. Miami-Dade County. So. Yeah. I mean, Miss Sally and them has a lot of... Well, their resources are going to be mm -hmm. great. Yeah, a lot more than what we do. The commissioner of the board has a... Uh, uh, the finance keeps an uh, inmate medical fund for, on the board side that they try to add to whenever they can to offset that they know there's overage as we have the history in the past. So that's, so that's the line item is going to come from. Okay. okay. And Aaron said there, there is enough right now to is. pay this particular bill. Okay. The future we'll have to see. So moved. And I, I thank you for that. I forgot about that. I, Cheryl, you may remember. I, I, I don't know if the others were here several, many years ago when we did have a larger uh, bill. I didn't mean that in a bad way. You just, you've just been here forever. But when we, we had a larger medical budget, we did agree with the board that we would bring that medical budget down and try to contain it with the agreement that we would come back to the board and they would have some extra funds. So I forgot about that fund. Thank you, Michael. That's what he's talking about. Yes, ma'am. Thank I'll you. I have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. See you in the morning. Yeah. Okay, so I'll move on to Mr. Alan. Pierce's. That's Alan Michael Pierce. Alan. Yes, Alan Michael Pierce. He's, he's, he's somewhere in North Carolina. He said he's, he told me he's uh, mountain bike riding today. And if I don't hear from him this afternoon, call the hospital that's in town there just to check on him is what he said. He's run so, off the cliff. Yeah, <laughs> or, or into a tree. Oh, oh, so, uh, number one, uh, by the way, um, Stella and Brian are here from Dewberry because the first two items uh, they probably want to speak a little bit more about. Item number one, board action to approve Dewberry task order for the work completed related to the GEBF, the project submissions, Gulf Environmental Benefit Fund. While the board approved the budget and the three projects to be submitted, there was no actual motion to approve the task order. Board action to approve Dewberry task order number two for the submission of three GEBF projects. As I said, still is here and might be able to give an update on the timeline yeah, for DP review forward. of all these of the GEBF project submissions. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. The um, three projects that you all approved were submitted to the state portal prior to July 1st. And the update that we have so far is that we did receive confirmation from the state agency DEP that's in charge of that portal that they received the projects and they have uploaded them and now they're available in the um, complete database for all of the other agencies to consider funding for. 
that's the update we have right now on those. So I do need board action. Yeah, I don't mind making the action, but could you give us, uh, remind us of what the three projects were? Sure, one of them was for a regional artificial reef program, which we called the Tri-County Artificial Reef Program. That would be a partnership with Wakulla, Gulf, and Franklin counties to basically create an artificial reef program for the three counties. The other two were your um, channel dredging projects, one for the Two Mile Channel and the other for the East Point Channel. Uh, so move. Second. second. Have a motion second on floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. I think you were that at the moment. I'm in a commission fair. I may have been. <laughs> you, you were the, yeah, you were that. Yeah. I remember the projects. I just want to get that out yeah. to yeah. the people, what the things we applied for. Item number two, commissioners, board action to approve the U.S. Treasury planning grant for the development of the multi-year implementation plan. The approval of this grant is the first step in, in beginning the development of the plan. Ms. Wilson can provide the board an update on the next steps in developing the plan. She is planning on the local restore committee meeting in, on August 16th, and Alan will be here in the county for that meeting. That's Alan. Alan. That's Alan. Yeah. Okay. Bike riding Alan. He'll be here for that meeting on August 16th. So moved. Second. second. Have a motion second before. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Any updates on that? Still, they, 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 uh, basically the update is that now that you have the planning grant agreement in hand and that you've just approved it it can now be uploaded through the Treasury system and you can officially begin on developing your MYIP now so we will kick that off August 1st which is the effective date of the planning grant we'll go ahead and get started on the first step which is the needs assessment and we'll have a um, restore advisory committee meeting on August 16th which is open to the public and that will be advertised okay item number three they're going to stay for a few seconds because item number five, I might need uh, their assistance. Number three, inform the board that the situation on Gulf Shore Boulevard has deteriorated over the last few weeks, where Alan felt it was necessary to discuss with Mr. Neighbors, our road superintendent, about what steps he could take with the county equipment to begin to open up access granted to the county across Ballpoint State Park. The four houses on Gulf Shore Boulevard are at risk of not being able to get to their homes. And DEP does not want the county to make any improvements which allow driving on the beach. Howard believes he can open up the access with county equipment. We would do the minimum necessary to provide access, and then once the FEMA relocation is approved, we would improve the road to the full scope approved by FEMA. The first step is to have Preborish reflag the easement across the state land. I've asked Preborish to provide a price for the reflagging of the easement. I'm waiting for the price but with board approval an expenditure of this nature can come out of the ballpoint trust fund so is the board interested in approving that now or wait until our private risk comes we back with a price we need to find out what the price of it's going to be that if he's asking about that okay uh, will fema reimburse the ballpoint trust fund or, or is this just money coming out of the fund that will not be that unfortunately i don't know the answer to that question commission i, I will ask alan though and see if fema will reimburse that I know I had concerns about them going ahead and going on in there, but, but Alan told me, and this is the only part that I was worried about, Alan told me that he's already got the paperwork from the EP that's allowing us to go through there, so that's no mm -hmm. big deal. Um, but whether FEMA will do, uh, you know, he's saying once FEMA, you know, the, once the FEMA relocation is approved, so I'm assuming that when FEMA approves it, that there will be monies coming down to it. I don't know if they can reimburse us for this part of it. Right. But it just says to build it out to full scope, uh -huh. which was yeah. to make improvements to uh -huh. it. Primitive, yeah. primitive road, basically. Yeah. And if they can, maybe we could find a way to get what we would have built for Howard's and the equipment for the county's time to, to help that yeah, reimbursement. But, but in the know. meantime, in the meantime, because it's like you said, the situation has deteriorated to the point where they can't get to there. What it is, they're having to go across one man's property, property. and the man's wanting money for an easement. For the access. And for the access of it. And so why do that when we can go around the other one? Yeah. So Ballpoint has plenty of money in it to take care of this. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't need to be reimbursed if we get reimbursed on it. My question is real quick, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. But the Ballpoint Trust Fund is to benefit everybody in Alligator Point, or is it just used for specific anything to do with the road the okay. road is at alligator point the one that they gave us 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, anything to do with the access roads and all. Okay. So that's a, what the original agreement was back in about, I think it was about 99, 2000, when they actually got a, uh, an agreement done was to go ahead and, and do it for any road. Uh, that's the reason why we've been able to use it on Alligator Drive, but I don't see no reason why not use it on To create road. access to the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is part of, this is all part of that. Yep. Oh, it's just for roads? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Item number four, inform the board that Department of Economic Opportunity has approved the Regional Economic Development Study Proposal Franklin, Gulf, Liberty, and Calhoun Counties. Mr. Chris Holly, <coughs> Gulf County, wrote the grant and will be the administrator. Mr. Holly, is, Mr. Holly is currently working on the scope of work. He does expect that one of the products of the Regional Economic Development Study will be an application to triumph for something that would benefit the, the four counties. On a related note, Mr. Holly does concur with the expectation that the University of West Florida will be receiving the 500,000 HUD Economic Development Study for the Panhandle. And they got it based on an email that um, we got and Alan forwarded to us, I'll forward it to you guys. It actually did get that study. Florida Great Northwest is still reaching out to the eastern part of the Panhandle as they continue to position themselves as the Regional Economic Development Agency. Mr. Holly said that the Gulf County has recently joined FG, FGN at a cost of $1,000 per year. FGN has recently hired a new executive director, Ms. Kim Wills, Wilms, who hopes to visit Gulf and Franklin counties during the August to better understand this part of the panhandle. In a discussion with Alan yesterday, over the weekend, he would like you guys to consider also joining FGN, and I asked Brian to kind of speak to that a little bit as to the benefits of doing such and how it would benefit the county in a regional way. Thank you, sir. Well, each of these efforts uh, are obviously poised to provide a profile of the county or counties in regard to future grant funds associated with economic development opportunities. The more recent those activities are, the more competitive they are in basically giving an illustration of what the county needs it would frankly seem at $1,000 a year for a full county um, participation in at least a four or five county area region would be really a great return on your investment. Because in the final analysis, as Triumph comes down or the other economic development um, services and agencies, the Department of Commerce start to wade in when, when that actually happens, these kinds of studies are exactly the kind of reference materials that the county is going to want to front forward when they make proposals to gain assistance to put any kind of improvements in. And it just advantages you greatly, simply. Thank you. And it's not something we got to do today. It, you know, I'm, I'm sure we can research it more and talk to the executive director more, and, and uh, I'm sure she'll come in front of the board to discuss it. And at that time, we could make a decision. He just wants the board to start thinking about it. And maybe, you know, you guys do your own research and see what you think about it. And I think that's it. That's important. If you guys have questions for Dewberry in any question. Oh, any questions? Yeah. Um, what part of that money we voted on that, but they got so many parts. Okay. What part of that money will the um, channel be coming out? Well, the the fact of the matter is the state portal is a an opportunity, a reference library for all of the pots, but the real call to action to give those updates as early as July was because the Gulf Benefit, Gulf Environmental Benefit Fund was going to make its new um, project selections uh, coming into the next quarter or two, uh, fiscal quarter or two. So those, that will be the likeliest early opportunity. Uh, but I want to go on and point out that a project of those profiles that are in the state portal, which we put them in uh, for you all, gives the opportunity for any of those other uh, resource pools to look at the project priorities and also either be funders or um, cooperate with that funding. So by putting it in this database, we, we got the ability to, to possibly reach in to several different pots of money, not just one pot. Yes, sir, that is correct. And you've, you've given an illustration of what your priorities are in Franklin County in that respect. I have a question, Mr. Yes, sir. Chairman, as it relates to the multi-year implementation plan, I noticed that y'all uh, having a restore committee meeting on August the 16th. 
-hmm. is that to get some of their input as to what they think needs to be implemented in this multi-year implementation uh, plan and also when will the board of county commissioners be able to interject some things that they want to see uh, put into this multi-year plan that's a great question and it's actually good that you brought it up on the schedule um, which I didn't bring with me but I'll make sure that you all get a copy at least via email we do have a tentative uh, uh, board workshop scheduled for September I was going to work with Alan to see what time might or what day might work best for you all we were thinking maybe September 20th that might be a really good time to get board input and yes you're correct the August 16th restored meeting would be to get the committee's input and we've had one or two meetings with them already and so over the past six or eight months that we've been working with Treasury trying to put together the planning grant Alan and I have been working on starting this comprehensive community needs assessment so that will really be the first step meeting with you all meeting with them gathering that list of needs and then we'll start to narrow it down by your priorities so that we can use those um, specific what we'll do is we'll turn them into criteria to choose projects by so yes I think um, in September would be a great opportunity if that works for your your schedule September 20th what yeah. we have when is our but do we have budget hearings and is that our last one is in August or September or what at this moment Linda is working with because you know the school board always get they, they got priority as to when to set theirs and we set it around there so she's working with them now to find out what their dates are then we can set our dates so I couldn't answer that question right now as we look at this multi-year implementation plan that is for the county funds of the restore act that's, that's what correct that's the part of money that this plan deals with uh, myself uh, I actually think that you know we'll just have a, a real quick discussion on this but we need to redo our EOC here in Franklin County uh, that's a project that not only benefits the county it benefits the municipalities within mm -hmm. the county we've applied for several years now competitive non-competitive we have the worst EOC structural uh, in, in I would say in the state of Florida to be on the coast to have an EOC that we have that is flood prone you know we have tornadoes we have hurricanes we have tropical storms we, we got one of the worst EOCs in the state and we've applied federally we applied through the state competitive non-competitive as I said before we're not trying to be redundant but I think that's something that would benefit this community as a whole in the future of being able to respond to whether it's deep water horizon or whether it's a tropical storm or whether it's a hurricane I think it's crucial that we upgrade our EOC and it's not a you know it's not a 10 million dollar project that I'm referring to but it's something that I think we need to look at as a board and that's just a comment I don't want to get into this today we'll we're gonna have our meeting and our set to but I just want to put that out there for the board members to think about uh, we need to do something with our EOC it's not in the proper flood zone uh, the whole nine yards it just needs to be upgraded and this is a, a, an opportunity that we've been struggling to try to find a way to fund uh, and it's something that will benefit the community as a whole uh, so I just want to plant a seed for that question uh, are there funds available for that there's funds everywhere we can't get them we've tried we've tried you know it may be that we try to come up with some matching funds and find something to match where we don't have to take it all out of the county restore act but uh, it's terrible you ought to go look at our place out there and, and you know, you're supposed to have a place there that can sleep people 24 hours a day while they're on call. It ain't happening. You, you see what I'm saying? We need to upgrade our EOC. And that, that is our Office of, of Disaster Response for this community. And, and, you know, getting our elderly, our disadvantaged transportation, getting people out of here. And there's a lot of function that goes on there during an emergency situation. And we're just not adequately prepared to do that. Uh, Commissioner Sanders, at the hurricane conference, didn't you talk to Brian King Brian mm -hmm. about that so Brian the governor's King. office is a he said, too. he said so. it was the governor and his priority within the next two years that, that there was a few uh, EOCs in Florida but Franklin King was number one and on their list Commissioner uh, try to do something about some funding to do that you don't never know that may be think about triumph or something yeah it may be where we try to, you know come up with a match or you know, something but we got to do well, something well and and this is where i come from if y'all remember the, the, the one of the very first things I, lit, I, I learned on on this board was the state of florida is going to look to franklin county to help themselves 
before they help us. Mm -hmm. And so we, I, I, I agree with smoking. We need to, we need to get on there and show them that we're serious about this. And and I agree with smoking. I don't know how we survived it by the by the skin of our teeth. It's probably it's how we survived. Shape. Yeah. We just hadn't had a bad impact right now. Yeah. Yeah. If you had a bad storm surge or something coming here. Oh, if it was down in Clearwater, he'd done fixed it. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Now, we've tried for several years. I've tried, you know, through the federal, through the state. We, we applied competitive. Well, it was non-competitive this year. And vice versa, I mean, we're just going around and around for several years trying to find a way to fund this thing. And, and but I agree with Commissioner Pierce. Well, just to advance the discussion for whenever the workshop finds its best schedule for you all uh, yeah. in September, uh, this is a good point to bring up the discussion about just how powerful these funds that you have in this restore allocation are. And that, that is, once again, they are considered your locally available funds for a full match. They, they are not considered prior appropriated federal funds. And that's a very important distinction because when, as we interview you and in the workshop and we learn about your specific priorities, the ability to leverage funds across those priorities is always going to be there. So when you look at your HMGP, you probably know that term, uh, hazard mitigation grant program, uh, opportunities where you are actually positioning yourself to put money into yourself uh, and in that match component, you become very different in the profile uh, of the project for the for the selections of the HMGP funds. So there's just lots of things will be uh, exposed by that one topic area, but for the rest of you, you have different priorities and we're going to find similar um, ways to help guide you through the best allocation of those funds and where they can magnify the resources that you can reach. And that's pretty much what we do. We look to try to ensure that the counties get no less than two to three match uh, capacity in, in, in their funding allocations, you know, by, by just trying to guide you into those areas. So I remember you, uh, if I might, Mr. Chairman, I remember you mm -hmm. making that statement before, so that's why I want to throw, to me, that's probably one of our larger projects, you know, there's going to be a lot of smaller projects, but and being able to leverage a few dollars of the county restore funds to leverage these other uh, matches and all, and I remember you making that statement, so that's, that's the reason I want to throw that out real quick. But, Super. Uh, I didn't want to get into a big discussion, but just sure. plan to see. Yeah, and the reason Alan probably picked the 20th, I think that's their second meeting in September, so he probably figures we do it in the afternoon. Uh, the 20th is? The 20th, yes, of okay. September. So that's probably good logic behind that. We're going to be here anyway, yeah. so yeah. I'll make a motion that we establish that for the afternoon of the 20th. Okay. Second. I have a motion to second before. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you all. You all have a wonderful day. Appreciate y'all coming. Thank you.